السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله المنعم المفضل الذي بنعمته تتم الصالحة سبحانك يا ربنا لا نحصي ثناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك نستغفرك ونتوب إليك وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيد الأولين والآخرين وعلى السابقين وقائد الغرب المحجلين سيدنا ومولانا وحبيب وحبيبنا محمد اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله الغرب الميامين وأصحابه نجوم الدين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وعنا معهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين أما بعد dear brothers and sisters I'm happy to be among, among yourself and uh, I don't know how to start but you see what I don't like a lot you know in our time we have everyone show himself as big issue in certain matters you know and Sayyidi uh, Sheikh Walid you know out of his good thoughts you know Hasan al-Dhan which is should be uh, the character of all of us, you know. He started to speak, you know, in a way that for myself, I don't accept myself as such, you know, because I'm not the one who, uh, who is uh, I fit all those matters that he spoke about. I'm just an ordinary person, you know. Uh, perhaps I got some knowledge from here or there and try to mix them together, you know, and speak to people, you know. So here, I'm here to share some of these ideas with you, uh, to uh, please, to, uh, if you find um, anything that is incorrect, to correct me or to uh, straighten me or whatever, because really I'm in real need of those matters, you know. And this is when we, sp we speak about the truth, you know, anyone is going to be under the truth, and the truth for the one who cared for his hereafter should be the one which covered everything of his matters you know, in this life. In many occasions we are going to be faced by something that we don't like a lot, you know, or something that is hated to us or whatever. But this is the truth. Okay? And whenever we speak about the truth, this is, should be above our desire, about, above our feeling above whatever, you know, we feel that uh, it's very important to our life, we should give it up, you know, for the truth. We should give it up for the right. And for sure, the truth, the right, not the way I speak about it or anyone else speak about it. The truth and the right is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said up to his people, to his servants, you know, to live in this life. Here, we are not by our own. Here, we are according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at the beginning of his holy book, Al-Quran Al-Kareem, he speak how, uh, yeah, many of us, we ask ourselves this question, why we are here, why we, why, why we are present in this life? Especially the one who suffers sometimes or uh, feel that his life is mis miserable. In many of cases, those people, they are going to ask themselves this, this question, you know, and many of them, especially in developed countries, they, they commit suicide, you know, whenever they feel that uh, this doesn't go the way they want it to, to, to go, you know. Here, we are not the lords of ourselves, we are not by our own. Here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, in fil ardi khalifa. We are as a successors or followers to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be here. Here we are to set up the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and no doubt, I have no doubt in my mind and any Muslim shouldn't have any doubt that this is the complete truth and nothing except the truth and anything else which doesn't go with this matter of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala word or whatever is completely the uh, the fake one, okay? When you look at your life, as a matter of fact, you are not going to find many uh, confirmed ideas or information that you have in your, in, your, in your mind, you know, except 
what's related to what you learn from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Most of our other aspects of knowledge or sciences that we deal with, it, with them, you know, even the highly sophisticated one, you know, you are going to find plenty of those data, you know, they are not the most accurate one, but this is the best thing that we know about it, okay? And by it, it's, ne it's never going to be comparable with whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us about. Here, we, we speak about certainty in one side, and we speak about the best we know about other matters, you know. And those best knowledge that we have, or best data, is going to be changed all over the time, all over the place, you know. Whatever is correct, you know, for us may not be as such for the others. Whatever is right for us may be the wrong for, uh, for the others. An example about, about it, you know, in medicine, in, uh, there's uh, a uh, uh, hundred years ago, there's no computer to speak about the comparison, you know, about it, you know. But all aspects of sciences, you know, you are going to find, I, I have a lot of examples in medicine, you know, in my mind, you know, that they are, this is the truth about it nowadays, which was completely wrong 100 years ago. And by the same maneuver, you may have it, you know, it's right today, and it may be completely wrong after 100 years. And no doubt about it. So this here, not to put down those matters, you know, but to put each of those matters that we deal with them you know, in our life in its position. Okay? And for Muslim, in this matter, whatever he deal with, nothing is com comparable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing to be uh, put in the same way or in the same scale that we put the matters here I'm speaking not about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala per se, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala beyond our limits, you know, in understanding Him, you know, completely and uh, know Him very well, you know, but about the matters of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put, put it, gave it as a gift from Him subhanahu wa ta'ala to us in this life, to live according to it. So those matters of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shouldn't be compared with other matters. And whenever you have such, uh, I give you an example about it. In one hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, he said, the, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we compare it with the other speech, the difference between them is equal to the difference between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his creation. And when we, we, we have this comparison, we know that there is no comparison at all. Okay. So here, since we are left in this life for a sh short period of time. It's very short. We may feel that it's long, you know, but, but regardless, I mean, this is what's mentioned, I don't know how accurate is it, you know, that the longest one to live in this life, you know, Sayyidina Nuh, they said, uh, he was asked about his stay in this life, you know. How did he feel about it when he passed away? And he said, like a room which has two doors, you know, and I entered from one door and got out from the other one. And uh, uh, here we have this authentic hadith from the Prophet ﷺ, when he gave the example about himself وسلم, as a person who went, who went to rest and have a shadow you know, under a tree, and he stayed it for a while, and then he left this and go. And this is not applicable only for our Prophet, this is applicable for any human being who you know, live in this life. And this is mentioned in the Quran. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that, uh, and as you, you may know, the hereafter is the day of truth, you know. Whenever anyone speaks, you know, the hereafter, most probably they are going to speak about the truth, you know. And those uh, people, you know, who were discussing their life, you know, in this uh, dunya, they said, we are, as if we just stayed there for one day. The most accurate one uh, among them is going to say, we just stayed for one day in this life. And this fact, we should be familiar with it, you know. We shouldn't uh, give up all of those knowledge that we know about the hereafter for enjoyment for a few moments in this life. We should give this life what it deserves and we should heal it.
give the hair after what it deserves. Or I would rather say what we deserve to have. Okay? Because this is for our sake. You know? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the whole universe, you know, for for the human being, you know, to see subhanahu wa ta'ala how they are going to handle these matters that they were given to them. For sure, uh, now nowadays we cannot deny that we have very luxurious life. Not only here in U.S., even in the poorest countries nowadays, you know, you are going to find people, you know, they are much, much better off in dunya-wise than the people that we read about them in the time of the Prophet ﷺ or other times. You know. uh, this is, is good by one way, but it may be bad by other way. It's good, you know, because this is going to in theory, at, at least save your time, you know, to be ready and free to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way we should worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this life. But on the other hand, it may be very bad one for some of us or many of us because the same way we deal with it is going to take us away of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala path. And that's what mentioned by, was mentioned by the Prophet One day he was sitting with his companion and he said, do you imagine when you know, some of you, they are going to be served with food, one, one type of food after another, and uh, those people, the Roman and the Persian, they are going to be as servants for you, and you are going to cover the walls, you know, on your, uh, uh, in your houses, same way the Kaaba is covered. And this, when the Prophet ﷺ spoke about it, you know, they cannot e even imagine it, you know. And they said, Oh Rasulullah, we are going to be better off in that day than this day. And the Prophet ﷺ was silent for a few moments and he said, No, you are today much better than that day. And they said, Oh Rasulullah, how come? <coughs> Does the good or the khayr, good matter, good is that they brought something wrong or something bad? And the Prophet ﷺ again was silent for a few minutes and he said, No, usually khayr doesn't bring any, uh, any uh, unhappy event for anyone. But this is like the Prophet ﷺ gave them the, the example when you have the rain and uh, this rain. Perhaps we don't observe it here, but we observe it in our countries, you know, because we have, whenever we have a year which is, we don't have a lot of rain, you know, we are going to find the, the land, you know, without any green. Whereas, whereas, whenever we have a lot of rain, we are going to find the green all over the place, you know. And this is, we observe it uh, every year, you know, whenever we have good uh, year, you know, of raining or, or, or not. So the Prophet ﷺ said, some of this rain, which is khayr, this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is going to kill some, some animals. He gave the example about camels, you know, who was hungry for a long time and keep eating, you know, of these greens, these greens, and it's going to be vanished and be killed, you know, by whatever he has done. You know. And he gave this example about this opening when you have this opening and how it's going to be, uh, uh, it's going to have this ne negative effect on people, you know, on some occasions. And as I said in the beginning, I cannot imagine about any opening, you know, in this life, the way we live nowadays. You know. yeah, uh, usually I give this example, you know. Now when you have hot day, you know, you are going to turn the air condition, you know. Uh, just imagine a king, you know, in the old days, you know, and let's assume that you have 20 person, you know, try to move, trying to move the air, you know, surrounding him. It's not going to be by any way, you know, similar to what we live nowadays. If he wants to travel, you know, how, how long it's going to take him, you know, to travel from one, one side to another. No doubt all those matters, they are favors, significant favors from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we should understand them very well. We, we should put them in their point, you know. We shouldn't have them beyond that. We shouldn't give them much more that 
than what they deserve, okay? One day the Prophet ﷺ was sitting, you know, as Sayyidina Mu'adha bin Jabal narrated, and a person in that sitting, he said, Allahumma inni as'aluka tamama ni'ma, the complete of the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet ﷺ asked him, do you know what, what's tamam al-ni'ma, what's the complete of favor? Tamam al-ni'ma dukhul al-jannah, the complete of the favor when you enter heaven or enter paradise, you know. And this is, means, according to my understanding, that the favor given to you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if this made you or help you to reach your destination, to go to heaven, this is a complete favor on, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whenever it did not work as such, as the Prophet ﷺ said in another hadith, it may be, may be from the apparent side as ni'mah, but it, in its reality, it's nikma or punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, don't uh, look at anyone, at, at a rebellious person, you know, when he has a favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because usually, this is going to vanish him by one way. So here, whenever you look at the ni'mah, at the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on anyone, try to understand it according to the way that person practices it, the way that that person deal with it, okay? If it's the good way, you should be, you should admire that person, you should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be similar to that person. Whenever it's not as such, shouldn't even speak about it. And that's what the Prophet ﷺ described when he limited the whole dunya for four persons. And everything you see in this dunya, you have one of four different exa examples about it. The first person who was given ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's righteous, he, he knows the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on him and on his wills or whatever favor he was given from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this one, as described by the Prophet sallallahu is going to be at the top. And the one who is similar to him, the one who has the knowledge, but he doesn't have wealth or favor, uh, apparent favors, you know, in this life, similar to the first one. And he is going to say, if I have money or if I have words from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm going to behave the, the same as that particular person and according to his intention, is the, he's going to be equal to that one. And the one who was given the wealth but not given the knowledge and he doesn't know how to act, you know, or to work according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instruction, he would rather, you know, as the Prophet sallallahu is going to be chaotic, you know, in his behavior and, and everything, you know. And this is the worst, according to the Prophet ﷺ standard. And the one who doesn't have knowledge nor having uh, wealth and is going to, to say, if I had wealth or money from Allah subhanahu is going to behave same way of, the, uh, uh, of that particular person and according to his intention, they are going to be. I'm not exaggerating it. I said, you know, perhaps these are the worst in our time, you know. Not the people the, the, uh, who malpractice, you know, in their wealth, you know. The people who speak about it. Because those who speak about those matters that we are nowadays enforced, you know, to, to hear and listen. Uh, wherever you go, you hear people, you know, speaking about dunya and whatever of those matters, you know. Uh, this make it the, make the worst, you know, among, because uh, uh, when they keep talking about it and we keep hearing them, you know, this is without any doubt is going to have its effect in our hearts. In Arabic, we call the, this kalam. What's the meaning of kalam? Kalam, kalama, when you have like a laceration or you, have, you injured your, yourself, this is called kalm in Arabic. And the kalam, when you hear someone speaking in the same way, this is going to affect your heart. You are going to have a trace there. And this trace may be rejected by your heart first time.
But when you keep hearing it, it's going to have its own place there. Sometimes it may occupy the whole heart. I made my introduction a little bit long, you know, because I was asked to speak about fitna. Okay, and uh, when we spoke about that particular hadith, when the Prophet ﷺ described some of his nation, you know, that he will be in the morning as a believer and the, the, at night non-believer because he sold his religion with a cheap price of this life. I was asked to speak about this point. And that's why, sorry, I have this long introduction in order to it. And this is very important. This is a very important point because I feel I may be wrong that this is the time the Prophet is speaking about. And unfortunately, myself and perhaps the others, we observe, observe a lot of people who sold their religion, you know, with not very cheap price. I think the cheapest because this is. There's no comparison, a comparison, you know, with, with you have. And this is what mentioned by the Prophet And the, the narrator of this is Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, when he stood on the pulpit of the Prophet one year after the death of the Prophet and he said the Prophet was standing here and he started crying when he remembered remember the Prophet And he said, the Prophet said that no human was given anything better than Believe, then health after he is giving the belief or the yaqeen. Okay. So the best thing we are given is the yaqeen with certainty in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second thing that consider I mean, this is in the scale of favors, okay? The first one, the most significant favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on all of us, alhamdulillah, here because we are all believers here, is to have this belief, especially when it's accompanied with certainty, full confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second one is the health, or perhaps I should have different word to be safe all the time. al in Arabic doesn't mean to be cured all the time. It may be to be safe, to be saved, okay? And this is very important when, especially when we have a lot of fitna. Okay, and this fitna, not necessarily to be hated to us, you know, it may be loved to us in many occasions. Here, this is reminding me about the last, last stand of the Prophet on his pulpit, as narrated in Bukhari. What did he say? And here, we feel as if the Prophet knows that he's going to pass away shortly and he wants to address the last word to his people, to his nation. What did he say in this? What did he say, did he say in his last talk? He said, إِنِّي فَرَطُكُمْ عَلَى Okay, The Prophet is going to be the first one to go to the watering pool, you know, and the hereafter that we believe in it, you know. And He's not an ordinary person that is going to go there and enjoy his time, you know, and have a rest. He's going to prepare everything for who? For us. This is the meaning of farat in Arabic language, you know. In old days, they used to have caravans, you know, and the, the, the caravans going to travel for many days, you know, and whenever they are tired, you know, they are going to send someone to go, uh, uh, in front of them, you know, and try to prepare for them a good place to stay at and spend the night or whatever, you know, in that. This is called farat in Arabic. And the Prophet ﷺ used the same word, you know, for himself. For sure, we did not send him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is sent to us, you know, as a favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he apparently, out of his care about, about ourselves, you know, he described this position. This is at the last talk of him. You know, just imagine, you know, him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, speaking, and he said, "Inni faratukum al hawb," as if he is waiting for us. Okay. But inni arahu min makani hada. He observes his hawb from his pulpit you know, in Medina al Munawwara. While he was standing, he observed the hawb, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This, not 
for himself, I think. This is for us to, to see how close, how near we are to that particular pool, this honorable position that we have in the hereafter, how close we are to it, you know, because the Prophet ﷺ observed it. But in the meanwhile, as the Prophet ﷺ said in other hadith, that many of his nation, they are going to introduce themselves, you know, to the house, and they are going to be taken away. It's too close, too near, but in the meanwhile, it's not reachable for some of his nation. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, spoke about it at, at his last talk, you know. And then he gave the reason, the major reason that may block us or take us away of reaching our destination. Okay? He said, and I'm not fearful, I'm not concerned about poverty, I'm concerned about dunya, to be open to you, and you are going to compete with each other, you know, in this life, and it's going to vanish you the way it vanished those people who would be born. This is was, just imagine it, this was the last advice, the last words from the Prophet <coughs> When I look at people, you know, nowadays, all over the place, not only here in this country, all over the place. They are going to say, Bi Abi Anta wa Ummi Ya Rasulullah. They are going to say a lot, plenty of salawat and taslimat of the Prophet because really he was too honest and too truthful, you know, when he advises us. And sometimes when you read some of these ahadiths that happen nowadays, you will say, you will say, if the Prophet ﷺ observed, or let's say, not the Prophet, someone, if someone observed, is not going to be able to give better description about it than the Prophet ﷺ, the description which was given by those hadith from him So here, this is the major fitna that the Prophet ﷺ spoke about. It. And we should be all familiar with this, we should be aware about it, you know. We should uh, uh, be careful about it. And I heard this comment today, you know, from, from some of our brothers, you know. To what ex extent we are ready to give up certain portion of our religion, you know. And Muslims nowadays, they give up many of their matters. So, to what extent we are going to go. And when we go way down, isn't this too dangerous that we are going to be among, inshallah, none of those audience, you know, it's going to be as such, you know, but we know for sure that some of the nation of the Prophet, they are going to be as such. And some of our nation, they are going to give up it completely. And for what? For the cheapest price, you know. Because for sure no one of us is going to be given the whole dunya, the complete dunya is given to one person. It's never happened, you know. So let's see what's my portion, you know, of this part of the wing of the mosquitoes, as mentioned by the Prophet What is my portion of it? And does it worse that when, when I have this fortune, you know, to sell my religion for it, to sell my belief, this which uh, was mentioned by the Prophet ﷺ this month, the most significant favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala me, to sell it for this matter. So here, I think the problem with Muslims, that they don't have their matters in a, uh, uh, give it the priority, but it's the most important or the priority in this life. And what is the most important thing is that we should save in this life and we take it by, by these steps, you know. So, as our scholars, they said, the most important thing in, the, in your life, of the five items that they mentioned, the most important one is your religion. Okay. And this is the one should be saved, you know, all the time. Why? Because this religion is not only important for the hereafter, you know. I completely differ, differ with these people who said that religion is 
only for your relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with you for the hereafter. No, they, they are completely wrong. Our religion, I don't know about the others, but our religion is for each moment of this life for you. Okay, because this is for your relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your relation with yourself and your relation with the others. Okay, you, you should know how to run yourself. This is your instrument, this is your machine, you know. And uh, it's the most complicated one ever created by Allah, the, to best of our knowledge. We don't know about the other thing. But this is the most complicated machine that we And you are the one who is responsible to run this machine. And here, you, uh, your responsibility is toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala firstly, and toward yourself secondly, and toward the others thirdly. And I cannot find much more beautiful than this hadith that summarizes these three relations, how to handle them, you know, when these two companions, Sayyidina Mu'az bin Jabal and Sayyidina Budar, were, they were about to leave the Prophet you know, to leave the Prophet for them. I imagine, I don't know if I'm right or wrong, you know, if you give that choice for any of them to have his head amputated or to leave, to leave the Prophet ﷺ, perhaps they would prefer to have their head amputated. But they don't have any other choice when the Prophet ﷺ commands them to go or to take the, uh, care of someone or to handle certain issues, you know. They don't have any choice except to obey the Prophet ﷺ. And they, they, he gave them, for both of them, this, to our knowledge, I, we don't know if well, this was given to someone else, you know, according to Sayyidina Mu'az and Sayyidina Mudar, he addressed them, both of them, Be fearful of righteous to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wherever you go. This is summarize your relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What's about yourself? You are not an angel, you are not going to be immune all the time. You may uh, commit some sins, you know. So how to deal with myself you know, in this regard? He said, whenever you have some of those wrongdoing, you know, just right away after it, do something do, uh, go, good, and this is going to erase it, you know, and take it away. Okay, and by this, you are going to be, you know, uh, more prominent than the shaitan who try to take you away all the time, and you are going to be much stronger than, than him, you know, by this way. This is for the others. You see, and here, the Prophet said, for, for no doubt, he instructed us the best way how to deal with all these, uh, all these matters, but he summarized it in three items, that our relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and our relation with ourselves, and our relation with the others. And I, I cannot imagine anyone in this life, any human, regardless of his description, has anything to do except all, uh, except these three matters that we have we have been speaking about, you know, his, uh, his relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his relation with himself and his relation with the other. So he, the best among ourselves, or I would rather say the happiest among ourselves, the happiest in this life, not in the after I'm not speaking about, the happiest in this life, the one who runs his machine, the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to, to have it. Right? I, mean, I don't know if I should give this silly example you know, or not. You know. when, you, when you buy a complicated machine you know, or computer, you know, you are fearful because you may do something that is going to spoil all of it. You know. And before touching it, you are going to look at the catalog of it and try to call the company you know, if it's reachable for to just to uh, know how to run this complicated machine. And here we are the same. And Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not leave us alone. Even before our presence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent our catalog, you know, which is the Holy Quran. This is, this is your book. This is to tell you how to run yourself, run, run your machine. Okay, and this is what we are responsible for in this life and in the hereafter. If some narrators they said uh, about this verse, "Wa wudi al kitab," the hereafter that the book is going to be 
showed and those who are criminals they were described as criminals you know in this verse they are going to blame themselves you know saying that oh my god this book will not leave anything minor or major without mentioning and counting it for us or against us some of the interpreters they said al-kitab whenever you have in the quran the book means al quran and in other words what we are going to be given in the hereafter, all of us, we are going to be given a copy of the Qur'an. And you are going to find yourself where you are good and where you are bad about what you have been instructed in this Qur'an. Okay? Uh, I would rather, you know, give you an example, you know, I, uh, I don't know if this is right or wrong, you know, but this is just an example. I'm not telling you this is the fact, you know, about the hereafter. As if when you have now a book, you know, and you have something written in a visible ink and the other one written in, written in invisible ink, you know. So some of, of us may find his book, you know, without anything, nothing was made, you know, of the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have the most perfect one, the Prophet sallam, who was described by Sayyidah Aisha, his wife, radiallahu ta'ala anha, kana khuluquhu al-Qur'an. And here you have complete match of the instruction of the Qur'an and the light, the characters of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's why all of us, we are granted to have this tradition of the Prophet sallallahu because uh, according to our limits, according to our intellect or whatever, we may be way down or fail ourselves, you know, un incapable, you know, of understanding the Qur'an the way it should be understood. And by this, the tradition of the Prophet is going to be the best resource to tell us how to understand the Qur'an, how to work according to Qur'an, how to behave according to Qur'an, how to live according to the Qur'an. And unfortunately, nowadays we hear, I think this was established here in the U.S., you know, about those people who speak about Qur'an, and we don't know, we don't want anything else except Qur'an. Mm -hmm. And you see how silly this idea, you know, because you cannot have anything you know, done without uh, enlightening all of these data in your mind. The Qur'an is a light by itself, you know. But this light, for the one who has problem in his eyes, you know, not be, may, not, may not be uh, that obvious, you know, or that understood. And this is, I consider it, you know, one of the major favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ourselves, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give us this instruction just as a theory. It was given to us as a theory and a, as a practice from the side, from the Prophet sallallahu side and from his companion, who, who, who were described by, by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi as the best generation ever on this earth. And here, we should be familiar with those matters. We should go according to them. I would rather say, that in Surah Al-Hashr, or Surah Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala said, وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوا وَمَا نَاهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُوا mean whatever has been given to you by the Prophet you should take it in other areas strongly and quickly okay whatever the Prophet reflame you or forbid you of you should stop doing it after this verse you have three verses in Surah Al-Hashr and this is a reminder of us <coughs> the first verse speaks about a muhajiri those immigrant with the Prophet okay. the Holy Quran praised them a lot and we believe they deserve this and we should speak up about them and we should be proud of them is the whole story? no we should try to follow their steps okay. I give you this example for sure, I'm not here to speak about those sadat, you know, those are our masters, you know, our, uh, uh, what to call them, you know, our masters, you know. Uh, 
I remember Sayyidina Musab ibn Umair. This young person who has very luxurious life in Mecca. He has been among two of his parents, you know, who have very good care about him. Whenever he passed in the street in Mecca, even if someone passed after him, an hour or so, he know that Musab ibn Umair passed him because of the smell. He has very nice perfume to use, has very nice clothes and you name it. In Medina al munawwara one day the Prophet was sitting with his companion observing Musab ibn Umair coming. What was his clothes? He doesn't have anything you know, to wear except the leather or the skin of the sheep. And when the Prophet starts seeing him, his tears start to come down. And he said, look at this young person. I did observe him, you know, in Mecca among his parents, between his parents, you know, who used to feed him and give him everything nice. And his love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger make him quit all of these matters and come in, in this shape that you see him observing now. Okay. We should be familiar with this because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised these people, you know, in Quran. We don't have any other choice except to, to know them to love them, to be proud of them, and lastly but not leastly, to try to match their life, try to resemble them, try to mimic them, try to go, go the way they go, try to look the way they look. Okay. In the second verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prays Al-Ansar, who received those people, you know, in Medina and Munawwara. And how they gave every, up everything for them. They shared them in their houses, in their family, and everything, you know, they were given, they shared those muhajirin with, with them. And uh, in Tafsir book, you know, they mentioned that this, the reason of, the, the, the reason of revelation of those verses was, what happened to those Ansar when the Prophet ﷺ, for sure, when he came to Medina and Munawwara, there's shortage of everything, you know, shortage of money, shortage of clothes, food, you name it. As mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَلَا نَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ Insecure, okay. وَالْجُوعَ, hunger, وَنَقْسِ مِنْ أَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالْسَّمَرَاتِ I'm going to lose some. Of uh, your wealth, of, of uh, yourselves, you know, and the fruits that you have in Medina and Munawwara. Okay. So, as we said, Zadat and Al Ansar, they shared everything with the Muhajiri. The first wealth to come to Prophet was when they have Bani Nadir, Bajil, you know, Ghazwaj Bani Nadir. And this, the whole surah, surah al was revealed for this, for this special uh, incident. And the, the Prophet ﷺ gave Sadat and Ansar the choice. He said, you have the choice. Either you are going to share this food with the Muhajirin, and they are going to stay with you in your houses and farms and you name it, or I'm going to give it all to Muhajirin and they are going to go out from your houses and share, sharing and whatever. What was the answer of the answer? Ansar? What did they say? They said, no, Ya Rasulullah. You are be, going to give it all to the Muhajirin and they are going to stay in our houses and in our farms. And they were praised by the Prophet, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this. And if I want to remember, 
you know, we have a lot of examples. We have a lot of examples about Muhajirin and about Ansar. But the example that I would like to remember now about Sayyidina Sa'ad ibn Rabia. This is one of the Ansar. He was in Uhud battle. And the Prophet ﷺ, by name, he said, who's going to look for me? What, ha what did happen to Sa'ad ibn Rabia? And he was asked, was asking Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam personally about Sa'ad ibn Rabia. And one of the Ansar said, I, I'm going to look search for him. And he found him about to die. I would rather say, when he was shouting, where is Sa'ad ibn Rabia? Sayyidina Sa'ad ibn Rabia was about to die and he did not answer. When he said, I was sent by the Prophet, you know, to look for Sa'ad ibn Rabia, he right away, by a very weak voice, you know, he answered him. And he's busy, you know, we should be, you know, we have a very short period of time, and we have all of us, not only Sa'ad ibn Rabia, we have few moments of this life, okay? And we, we are in very short period of time, and we have a lot of duties to do, okay? So here, so at the beginning, Sayyidina Sa'ad ibn Rabia felt, I think that no need to answer this person. He want to give me something to drink or whatever, you know. And this nothing left, you know, in this life. When he said, "I was sent by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam," yes, answer him right. This is not the point I want to highlight. When he came to him, he told him, "You see, just imagine this person is about to die within one or two minutes. What's he going to say?" We are not going to fool ourselves, okay? What's occupied in this heart now is going to show up at that part, uh, critical moment. All of us, you know, we put in our minds that we are going to change our behavior. We are going to change everything, you know. But the reality, you know, what's occupied now is going to be shown up, you know, at that particular moment. That's why you should observe, you should watch your heart now. What is the most, most important? What is the most beloved to you? What's fill your heart? What you feel happy with it is going to take place at that particular and critical mo moment of your life. Or I, I would rather say the most critical moment of your life. So here, really, if you have the ability, I cannot explain it. If you have the ability to explain it to me, I, I, I highly appreciate it. Sayyidina Sa'ad ibn Rabia telling that person, okay, please go and tell the Prophet, Jazakallahu anna khayfa. I highly appreciate whatever you have done for us. You see, for myself, I don't fully understand it, you know. I feel that those people, you know, they have tasted something made them even in this very critical moment when they are short of breath and they have a lot of pain and they are thirsty and they are this and that, you know. They bypass all those matters, you know. Don't remember anything of those needs, you know. And just speaking about to, to convey this message to the Prophet Jazakallahu khairan. I don't know. There's something. They have tasted something that I did not taste perhaps up till now. And we should search in our life, you know, to taste the same way they, they, they tasted. What did happen to them? You know, they are not human. They don't feel pain. They don't feel thirsty. They don't feel, feel anything, you know, to just bypass all of these matters, you know, and just remember to, to say, Jazakallah khairan. This is what I'm looking for. This is what I'm searching for. I'm not here to tell you that Alhamdulillah, I am a good man and I know what's going No, I'm not good at all, you know. I'm searching, you know, for... I would like to taste the way they tasted, you know, in this life. Okay? And this, really for me, this is a uh, uh, difficult equation or dif difficult question and I would, would look forward to try to taste what they have, you know. Here in Surah Al-Hajr, after mentioning these two 
unique time, you know. Really, really, to be honest with you, whenever we read about them, we feel as if they, they are not from this planet, as if they came from, came from the outside, you know, from elsewhere, you know. They are not human. They are, or would rather say, we are not. <laughs> they are the real human and we are not. Okay? So, here, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described these two types, He described the third type, ourselves. What's good in ourselves? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not mention except two things. You don't tell me about anything else. Here we are speaking about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described us with. And if someone wants to be good one, he should match these two matters which has been described by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is the first one? That we are going to make dua to those who passed away before us, you know, especially those Muhajirin and Ansar, to speak up about them, to love them, to have our unique connection with them, you know, because these are our people, these are our family, these are the people, inshallah, they are going to wait for us in the hereafter. They, these are the people who cares about us, these are the people that is going to save us, you know, and take us. Uh, with them, you know, whenever we have this unique relation with them. So, uh, at least we should make dua to them, we should speak up about them, we should know about their stories, we should have a significant amount of our time speaking about them, themselves, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking about them, you know, in Qur'an al And what's the other point, which in my view is one of our major problems nowadays, this is, in my view, I may be wrong, this is a major disease that we have nowadays. He said, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَلَا تَجْعَلْ فِي قُلُوبِنَا غِلًّا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُ Don't put in our hearts any negative or ill feeling for the, the believers. And I'm sorry to tell you that nowadays we are really bad in this practice. Okay. And this lead me, I'm sorry, you know, I should apologize because I start by something and end by something, you know, I don't know about what I'm talking, you know, so you may excuse me, I'm not well organized, you know, in my mind. This is lead me to speak about what's narrated in Tirmidhi by Sayyidina Anas ibn Malik that the Prophet addressed him, Ya Bunai, Ya Bunai, O oh my son. You see, how dear is this from the Prophet to tell Anas ibn Malik, Ya Bunai, O oh my son. If you have the ability to be in the night and in the day without any negative or any ill feeling to any of the Muslims, do so. And be sure that this is portion of my tradition. And whoever resurrects my tradition is a real lover of me. And whoever loves me is going to join me or be with me in the hereafter. In my view, I may be wrong. This is the tradition of the Prophet that we buried many days, many years ago. And that's why I ask myself and ask all of you to try to resurrect this among ourselves. Okay. It's not shame to have difference in opinion you know, about certain matters. It's too shameful, you know, to be against each other, you know, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be one nation. When the Prophet wants us to be United. And this, the same three verses that I spoke about, tell me about another hadith that whenever I mention it, you know, the people, they tend to hate to hear it, you know, but I would like to speak about it. Sorry about this. This is authentic hadith that the biased people, they are going to be run away, and we are going to be left with Husala. 
<coughs> the Prophet mentioned it with the name in Arabic Husala. Why they pray facing me, you know, this is not good. Sorry about this, you know, but I cannot face, you know, people, I mean, they should go right or left, you know. So he mentioned them as Husala. What's the meaning of Husala? When you have the grain of barley, you may have, especially in the old days, some dirt, you know, among them. This is called Husala. So here the Prophet ﷺ described, perhaps our time, that we are Husala. I should admit, we are, I am one of the Husala. For sure, none of us would like to hear this. No doubt about it. Okay. But here, we are receiving this from the one who is the most truthful. This is not wrong statement is completely right statement whether we like it or not this is different story if you don't like to be of Husala you should as I spoke about you know before we should try to follow the steps of Saladin and Muhajirin and Ansar those they are not Husala we are Husala who don't like to be, don't behave according to the way your people understand they behave. You should change yourself, okay? Try to live, try to look forward, try to understand much more how the companions, Sadatun al Muhajirin al Ansar, they used to be. Okay? The one who enjoys time, you know, as Hussein, that's it, you know. This is, this is his business, you know. The one who doesn't like it, and I, I read this statement you know, recently, you know, which really I, I feel it, it is applicable to all times. It's much more applicable to our, our time. This is narrated by Sayyidina Urwa, yani, this mentions this statement by Sayyidina Urwa ibn Zubayr, and it's some resources by Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib. And we should be familiar with it. They said, people, they are similar to their time much more than their parents. <coughs> I, I might tell you, I'm not as such, but I may tell you that my father used to be a sheikh. The other one is going to tell you that I'm from noble family uh, who used to do this and that. The third one might tell you this or that. Okay. We should tell ourselves that we are not as such. We are similar to our time, much more to our parents to, or to our families. Okay. And as you may observe, you know, in this country and elsewhere, you know, we are going to be changed a lot. And this change, not always to good, you know, it may be to bad or worse, okay? And uh, uh, when we try to mimic the others who were described Husala, for sure we are, our standard is going to go down, okay? And we may compete with them, and we may uh, be the way that the Prophet ﷺ warned us not to be as such, you know, at his last talk on his pulpit. I'm going to stop here, inshallah. And if there is any other speaker, you know, because I usually I, I have very empty, you know, case, you know, I cannot speak for a long time. Uh, is any question? <laughs> this is not hadith. This is statement by Urwa ibn Zubair. He, he said, Anasu bi azmanihim ashbahu minhum bi abaihim. Other question? Yes? Jazakash al khair, ya Sheikh. The hadith to be al al hufale. Okay, the Prophet said, يذهب الصالحون الأول فالأول وتبقى حسالة كحسالة الشعير لا يباليهم الله بالا يعني أنا ذكرت بشوز لفظ منه في إلو ألفاظ مختلفة هذا موجود في البخار Yes نسمع شيخ أن 
يعني المسلمين يعني يقتلون يعني في سوريا وهكذا ف يعني ما حقوقهم علينا يعني و يعني كيف نتعامل يعني في عصرنا يعني و في كل ال... في كل البلاد يعني المسلمين يعني في في, في الشده هكذا بليز اف يو اكسكيوز مي I'm not here to speak about politics. Okay. So if you excuse me of answering the political uh, questions, you know, I highly appreciate it. Okay. And uh, to be honest with you, as I said, you know, we have a very short period of time. And I'm sorry to tell you that we waste a lot of time in many matters that we should concentrate more about certain issues that in our life. Okay. But I'm not here to speak about uh, politics. Uh, if we're, so in this country we're very immersed in the, the dunya, and, or at least I am, and we're looking for always next step in education, next step in life, and then job. And we don't have a lot of access to that. And is there any shortcut or way that we can get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yes, for sure. It is very easy to the one who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for him. And it's difficult, difficult otherwise. Why I'm saying as such, you know, because uh, as I said at the, at the beginning, we are in very developed era, you know, of the human being. And this for sure is going to make us involved in many, many matters. And we make us busy in many issues. And I imagine I may be right or wrong, you know. In the old days, you know, regardless of how busy they are going to be, just to have to eat, you know, to have good clothes, to have whatever, you know. But nowadays, we'll get involved, you know, in many, many issues, you know. And many of these issues are matters, you know. They are not helpful for us, you know, for the hereafter. Some of them, they may be harmful for us. The major point is to have the purification of the heart. To have your heart connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To have special relation with Allah. In all times, you know, even in the Prophet's last last times, even among those people who observe the Prophet's last last, we we say ourselves, you know, what's an honorable position, you know, to observe the Prophet's last. But we know for sure, not everyone observed him, you know, in these old days. He was a good man. Some of them they were infidels, the others they were hypocrites, and you name it. One day the Prophet <laughs> was passing through a grave, you know, with Sayyidina Abu Rafi', his servant. And the camel all of a sudden start to be shaky, you know, and the Prophet ﷺ was about to fall down from it. And he start to say, oof, oof. And Abu Rafi' said, oh, Ya Rasulullah, he saw that this is addressed to him, you know. Why? He said, no, I'm not speaking about you. But this person in the grave was asked about me and he did not know me. And I imagine in my mind, this person who used to live in Medina, observe the Prophet every time, all the time, and he failed to answer who was the Prophet So what I'm trying to say, in all times, it's not a matter of your setting or your deeds. It's rather the matter of your connection your heart, okay. that particular person, from the apparent way, he was too close to the Prophet ﷺ. But apparently in his, not, in his heart, he was not as such. Okay. In our time, it's too difficult. I'm not telling you it's too easy. We have a lot of things to take us away. We have a lot of things, you know, to occupy our hearts. <coughs> but no doubt, some of us, they are going to be having the 
very strong relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A very strong relation, unique relation with the Prophet Okay, even though they are from outside occupied with whatever we are occupied with in this life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَالسَّابِقُونَ السَّابِقُونَ أُولَٰئِكَ الْمُخَرَّبُونَ Okay, this, according to many scholars, this is the highest rank among people, you know, after prophets. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, سُلَّةُ مِنَ الْأَوَّلِينَ وَقَلِيلُ مِنَ الْأَخِرِينَ Even in our time, we are going to have few people, you know, this. And that's what narrated by Al-Hakim al-Tirmizi, the Prophet sallallahu said, فِي كُلِّ قَرْنَ مِنْ أُمَّةِ سَابِقُونَ In each generation, you have people, you know, of those who come first, you know, or the sabiqun, of this high strength. And that's what I feel that all of us, we should look forward for those people, you know, or try to mimic me, them, them, or to get closer to them, you know, in this life. Okay, so here, I'm not putting down all other matters, but the most important matter to have purification of the heart and get it in touch, have certain relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, certain relation with the Prophet And by this, regardless of the position, the circumstance that the person is going to be in, is going to have very decent life, very happy life, you know, and inshallah is going to be saved because as I I'm started, I'm sorry, perhaps I did not explain very well about fitna, you know, this time, you know, when you have a lot of people, you know, they are astray or gone uh, wrongly, you know, this is going, inshallah, to be saved, you know, whenever he has this strong relation with Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. If this is hadith, I think, narrated in Musnad Imam Ahmad, the Prophet spoke about the four types of heart. I think this is important you know, to, to be mentioned, if you give me the permission. He mentioned about four times, uh, four types of hearts. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Qalbun Ajrad, pure, there's nothing in time, you know. Fihi mislu siraj there's a light inside it, make it all enlightened. And the Prophet said, this is the heart of the believer, Qalb al And you have the second type, Al-Qalb al-Aglam, wrapped, well wrapped, okay? Nowadays, when someone wants to give a gift or a present to someone, if it's not wrapped well, you know, they will not consider it as good, right? Here we have some who have completely, they wrapped their heart, what does this mean? Qalb aglaf. That means nothing is going to come to this heart. Even if they hearing, they hear the recitation of Holy Quran, they hearing mawiza or nothing is going to affect them. And this is the heart of the unbeliever or disbeliever. And the third one, mankus, it's upside down. And this is the heart of the hypocrites. And the fourth one, Musaffah, I think the translation of it, plated, like you have a plate on this. This is plated, this heart, by two, two materials, white and dark one. Okay, the, the light or the white one is when, when you commit or have good deeds in your practice. And the, dark one or the black one when you have other ways. And it's plated by two things. So the one is more prominent, the heart is going to be according to it. If I want to translate it, you know, to a practice, we feel ourselves during Ramadan, when we pray, we have night prayer, when we we recite Quran when we are fasting or whatever, as if this good deeds, you know, and the light or the white plate is going to take over most of our hearts, you know, and by this we feel ourselves too close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We feel ourselves driven to, you know, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise, when we got busy, when we have some 
unlawful or illegal way, you know, of living or look or hear or whatever, you know, of those matters which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not permit us to do and that the other place is going to take over. We feel ourselves as if we are lazy to pray, you know, we don't have our heart as a soft, you know, whenever we hear the, the recitation of Quran or when we pray, pray, we may miss a lot of prayer, we may do this or that, okay? So, the, the, I, I think most of us, they are of this, the, the fourth time, you know, and the plated heart, you know, and uh, always we have this of come, come and going, you know, you have this is, has the upper or the superiority, and then the other one is going to take place. But the problem here, at what one moment we are going to pass away? See? In the moment that we have this heart completely plated, you know, with the enlightened one, you know, or the light one, or the, the, the white one, or otherwise. So, so, again, to answer your question, this is the most important thing. And whenever we fix this very well, Insha'Allah, the other matters, they are going to be fixed for us. So we are speaking about purification of the heart. This is the most important point to have. Yes? Um, how do we punish our heart and ourselves from you know, the heavy focus on the dunya um, so that we can have this connection with Allah? Allah, Allah, Allah. You see, in this matter, everyone has his own experience. What I understand, I go by love, okay? I go by love. And the love, whenever you try to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and love his messenger, this is the best way of being firm, you know, in the sake, on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and not be vulnerable to those storms, you know, and other matters that all of us, they get exposed to. The love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, by gaining more, much more knowledge about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Usually I highlight two matters, you know, I'm not that familiar, you know, I need a lot, you know, of, to be done, you know, in this matter, you know, I'm too poor, you know, in it. I, I see it from two matters. The first one, keep reciting Quran al -Kari. This is going to end. Enrich your knowledge in Allah subhanahu wa Okay, this is the best resource to enrich your knowledge in Allah And as Allah subhanahu wa mentioned in the hadith, anajalisu man dhakarani, sit with us. And if you sit with Allah, speak with Allah in His word. I don't know how, but for sure I know the one who has this position all the time is going to be knowledgeable of Allah and it's going to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala much more. So the second point which has been highlighted by the Prophet sallallahu we have some special unique relation with Allah overnight. Okay, night prayer. Even very short to rak as you know, before Fajr time or whatever. This special unique time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again is going to give you a lot. For the Prophet sallallahu of course, when you keep speaking about his seerah about his shama'il or whatever, you know. This is going to enrich your love of the Prophet when, when you keep him in mind, keep in <coughs> remembering him, have a lot of salawat on him, وسلم, try to follow his tradition, those matters are going to make you much closer to the Prophet For me, at, as I said, you know, at the beginning, people, they may have different practice, different uh, experiences, you know, on those matters. For me, those two, these two matters, you know, is the best, you know, to save you of the time that we live in, you know, and we are exposed to a lot of fitna in this time. The question was that to the one behind you. I was going to ask the same question yesterday. Same, same question. MashaAllah. Good. Alhamdulillah. Yes? In the recent years, uh, a lot of people around the world, they started or out of ignorance, whatever. What is the best way to defend the Prophet, Allah, especially those of us who live here? Very good question. 
don't mis misunderstand me. He said the best way, I'm going to speak about the best way. We have other ways that we should take care of about, but the, about the best way that you are speaking about. And this is concern or related to all of you in particular, much more than our said, you know, those who, are, who live in Muslim countries. Those who live in non-Muslim countries, the best way for them, you know, is to be good examples. Okay? And here, people, they don't, they don't know Islam. They are going to know Islam through yourselves. Okay? This is a Muslim person. So they will know Quran, they will know Islam, they will know the Prophet from you, through yourself. How do you behave? How do you act? They are not going to say that you are as such. They are going to relate it to your Prophet, to your Islamic instruction. They don't know that they are good Muslims and bad Muslims, you know, they are good practitioner and bad practitioner. They are, you are, yani here you are in very sensitive position, okay? Because you are, here you are not by your own and you are responsible for yourself. You are responsible for the whole Islam, the personality of the Prophet the Holy Quran, and you name it, okay? And people, they are going to understand those issues, you know, from you according to you. And this makes your responsibility here and your task is very uh, great one. Okay. Uh, and uh, sorry, this is, was the meaning given by someone, by some scholars, you know, when the Prophet said, Al-Muslimu man salim al-Muslimuna min lisani wa yadeh. And the real Muslim, the one who uh, had the Muslim saved of his tongue and his hand, he said the interpretation of it, when someone behave or misbehave, and the, the Muslims, they are cursed or criticized because of him, here the Muslims, they are not safe of his tongue and his hand, you know, by indirect way. Yes, your question. Uh, one thing for many that concerns a lot of Muslims here in the West, raising children, um, that for a lot of, uh, we see unfortunately that there are many um, of the youth who have strayed from Islam significantly. And in addition to trying to provide the best example through our actions um, as da'wah to them, to try to bring them back and showing kindness to them, is there any other advice that you have specifically for those who have, uh, it seems like there's a barrier between them and the deen and they very far away um, to try to uh, bring them back uh, closer to Allah, inshallah. This is very long and problematic question. <laughs> I don't know how to answer it. Yeah, this is one of the major problems that we live not only here in this country, all over the, the world, but I think in such a country it's going to be much worse, you know. And I hear a, a lot of difficulties, you know, about the, those matters, no doubt about it. And I heard about certain study that the effect, you know, on, of parents, you know, and their children is going to come number five or six or whatever. And here, even the parents, they are not the first one, you know, to be effective, you know, for their children, you know. We have the environment, we have the surrounding, you have the TV, you have the school, you have, you name it, you have many, many other aspects going to get involved. For sure, I would like uh, the idea that you gave, you know, which is too important, and perhaps some of us, we are not that good at it, you know. Some of us, we are Muslims, we love our Islam, but we are not that good practitioner of our Islam. And be sure that the, our children, they are going to get the message right away from us. And they are smart enough to understand what's going on, okay? And when I speak about them, you know, to pray and do this and that, and they observe me when I miss my prayer or do this or that, you know, they will get the message. We have two different standards. We speak about something, you know, and do something else, you know. So here, for, for sure, this is very important point, you know, or perhaps it's the first and most important point to have, to be honest with yourself, you know. To be exactly, this is what part of the tradition of the Prophet 
when he was uh, say that um Salama, the wife of the Prophet was asked to describe the Prophet she said كان سره وعلانيته سواء. And from inside and outside, it's the same, the Prophet I'm sorry to tell you, we are in a time, all of us, we have a lot of masks on our faces, especially in this country. Okay? And here, this is, from my viewpoint, is exactly the opposite of the tradition of the Prophet And that's what, what, what uh, this is was mentioned by many of the companions, you know. Kana Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he is happy, you know, is going to understand or know it from his face. And whenever he is angry, he is going to understand it or observe it in his face, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Like a mirror, very pure mirror, you know, about what's going on inside. Here, we may not be as perfect as, as him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to do so. But we, try, we should try to take away all of those masks, you know and take away all of those uh, matters that we pretend to be someone, you know, and we are the reality others, you know, especially in front of our children, you know, because really, as I said at the beginning of answering this question, they are too smart, you know, and they are going to know the trick, you know, and how we deal with them, you know, in this regard. There's many other uh, matters or issues, you know, I don't know if it's time, you know, to speak about it. Uh, what if um, you were to have like a brother uh, and this brother went astray and he doesn't practice the deen and you care for this brother a lot and you, you try to give him nasiha in a good way and you try to tell him uh, good things but it won't go in him and he completely ignores you do you keep giving him uh, nasiha or do you Leave him alone. What's the best thing to do? The best thing to keep giving him this, you know. We hear in the book of Tafsir that Sayyidina Nuh, how long did he stay with his people? 950 years. Okay. In book of Tafsir they said that uh, the person, when he got old, will tell his son, this is, this is a liar you know, about Sayyidina Nuh. So he keep inviting him them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 950 years and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said وَمَا آمَنَ مَعَهُ إِلَّا قَلِيلٍ Those who follow him and believe in him they were, were few okay so this is not our task or our responsibility to uh, bring a very good resu result you know but our duty to keep up you know reminding that person because you don't know when his heart is going to be open, you know. Because I imagine that this person has the plated heart, you know. And perhaps most of the time he has the darkness, you know, or this black plate come to his heart, you know. And sometimes you may have this white one, you know, and he's going to accept your uh, advice or nasiha, you don't know. So uh, since this, the heart is not in your hand, his heart, you know, you should keep uh, advising him and speaking with him. Yes. شيخ جزاك الله عنا خيرا. كما تفضلت المشكلة الكبرى في هذه الأيام هي الحقد والحسد والغل بين المسلمين. فما الحل في ذلك؟ نصيحة. Okay. This is mentioned by if you speak about حسد. It's mentioned by the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. He said that there's three major diseases. His nation is not going to be cured completely of them. And he gave us some treatment whenever we have this illness. One of them, hasad, envy, as we said. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Whenever you have this ill feeling about someone else, don't go beyond the limits, okay? You have this ill feeling in the heart. Don't let it show in your speaking, in your uh, behavior, or in your practice toward him. Rather, you should perhaps give him more care, 
give him more good deeds, you know, this person, just to go over or go against your feeling. Okay. Again, everyone has his own practice. You know. If you want me to tell you, you about my experience, you know, this. here we are not speaking about Hassan, we are speaking about the difference between nation and how this one from this section, the other from the other section, and they try to make, call everyone kafir and whatever. I'm going to tell you about my experience, okay? I used to be as such, you know, at the beginning of my life. I try to argue with this one and uh, put down the other one and try to prove this point or whatever. Then, when I look at the Prophet life, I felt that he was Allah completely against this. He will accept people you know, of different ranks, different standards, different love of him, different everything, you know, they are different in all matters, you know. Rather, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to accept a person when he say, La ilaha illallah, you feel yourself, you know, after many years that that person who said La ilaha illallah in the front of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was not that, yani, honest or that sincere about saying it. If I felt it, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not feel it, no, he felt it much more than me, you know. But here, the Prophet ﷺ wants us to give the good thought about Muslims, <coughs> try to unify Muslims all together, okay, and try not to make, and when I love something, love the Prophet or love this matter or whatever, try to take revenge from others, you know, who are... Here, if I want to be more specific you know, about it, we should recognize what's essential and what's basic in our religion and what is not as such. Okay? I know doubt in Islam we have something basic, we have something essential. This is, don't misunderstand me, I'm not going to tell you to be easy with anyone who try to give up some of these points. You should be quite firm, quite strong against that particular person. Okay? Because those essential matters, no one has the right to change any of them. Okay? We have the other controversial matters. You see, the other different behavior, different attitude, different matters, that we have different opinion about it. And by this, we should respect each other. I'm sorry to tell you that Muslims nowadays, in my observation, I may be wrong, you know, they spend all of their time, their time in those issues, and they are much easier with the other issues and with the non-believers. Okay? Which, in my view, is completely wrong. Just I would like to mention this story, you know, because I like it a lot, you know, if you permit me to, to mention it, you know, and this may help us, you know, to be firm, you know, on that. This is, uh, and always we read the narration about how was the position and situation when the Prophet passed away, and we have those who converted back, and uh, the Medina Munawwara was in very critical, uh, position, you know. I read recently, you know, about Sayyidina Abu Bakr siddiq how did he handle it. In one narration that when the Prophet ﷺ passed away, you have most of the Arab, you know, the surrounding of Medina, they converted back to Kufr. Even the Persian and Roman, they started to prepare them, themselves to attack against, against the Muslims in Medina. And the hypocritics among people of Medina, they started to show up. When they said, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, he observed this, he gathered the companion, consulting them what we should do. Most of them, they said, 
we should compromise with it. This is because with the first talk that we, we spoke about, you know, the fitna and how the person sells his religion. You see. So this, I, uh, I keep forgetting. I wanted to, to mention this story because I love it, you know, I like it a lot, you know, but I forget about it. And thank you, you reminded me about it. They said we should give up, we should have some compromise. He said, This is your opinion, they said this. Climb the pyramid, he said. Listen. The Prophet did not pass away, did Allah till Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completed the whole religion. There's no revelation after the Prophet. And this is not going to diminish or reduce while I'm alive. This was the answer of Sayyidina Prophet. He said, no revelation after the Prophet, and this is not going to go down or reduce in my life. For sure, such a person like me, I may speak with you about this and, and go and sleep. But then Sayyidina Bakr Siddiq, who was above 60, did not do so. What did he do? <coughs> Medina was empty. They sent the soldiers to Syria, you know, with Sayyidina Osama ibn Zayd. And very few left in Medina al Munawwara. Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, just to protect Medina of those tribes surrounding, you know, that they may attack Medina at any moment, he went south, outside Medina with those, some elderly people, you know, and the other people who are left in Medina al Munawwara, on what? on the camels that they used to bring water to the farms, Nawadih, Nawadih, Hassan Nawadih, those that they have been used, you know, to bring water. And this not good for traveling or for fighting or whatever. It's just to bring water, you know, and they took them away. Yani. Here the economy, we are speaking about economy of Medina, which is all on culture, you know, agriculture. They took away those camels and they went outside Medina to try to protect them, those people, you know, from the, any expected attack, you know, from any of the tribes surrounding Medina and Munawwara. They stayed for, there for how long? More than 40 days. This above 60 year old, Sayyidina Abu Bakr and the other, they stayed more than 48 days. And when Sayyidina Usama said, return back, they to, he told him, you are tired, you know, from your traveling and tra uh, fighting, just rest, have a rest, you know, have a rest for a few days, and we are going to stay outside Medina, you know, till you get rest, you know. So here, I ask myself, and I should ask you, if Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq compromised or tried to give up some of those matters in his day, what do you expect to have nowadays of your religion or of your Qur'an? Zero. Yes, you are right. If the Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq opens this door, we are going to be left with anything, nothing, with nothing at all. Okay? So here, why I should tell this story? Because nowadays we have this fitna, we have many of us giving up giving away some portion of our religion, you know, for this reason or that, or those people or the others. And by this, they are not going to harm the, Muslim, the Islam per se, or the Holy Quran, because the Prophet ﷺ guaranteed that the Quran and the uh, Islam, they you still have some few people, Ta'ifa, they are going to handle it the way it should be handled till the hereafter. But he's going to harm himself and those who belong to Okay. So by this, here, when you speak about anyone who is commentator, you know, in this life, he, he will tell you these are losers, you know, just few people, you know, trying to protect Medina, Medina which I imagine it at that time, like a very enlightened dot, you know, in surrounded by an ocean of darkness. They are short of everything, you know, and surrounded by all those powers, Anyone you, you ask him about their position, he is going to tell you that they are losers. But the reality, no, they were the successor, the most successful one, you know. 
Uh, and uh, I'm not exaggerating if I, uh, I tell you, you know, we live nowadays in their favor. You know, because the Quran that we have nowadays, the Islam, our fuqh, whatever you, what, what the Sheikh spoke about those Islamic sciences, you know, all those matters, they are the favor, firstly, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, secondly, of the Prophet sallallahu thirdly, of those people, you know, who conveyed everything to us, you know, without any change. And now it's our ta time, our turn, our responsibility are going to deliver to the comic generation the real Islam or the modified one or the American Islam or this or that. Allahu Akbar.